History is myth. Well, if that ain't appropriate, I don't know what. You all know Venice Beach. I don't have to tell you much about it. It's beautiful, trashy, and still possesses some of the old magic that's been lost to LA over the decades as we continue to tear down and rebuild the city till we no longer recognize it. Anyway, I was gonna tell you, I was gonna tell you about this dingy house in Venice. All the times I've passed it on my bike, I've never seen anyone inside or out front of it. I have a habit of telling ghost stories, but this is no scary story. The ghosts I encountered here are flickering memories, stuck, out of time. Melancholy spirits, only too happy to be visited. It's only proper we should begin with the Lady of the Manor. And here she is, ladies and gents. My name is Delia Brannigan, and welcome to my home. Nobody visits that much anymore. You haunt an incredible house. Thank you. There are others here as well who you may wish to meet, and you may wander freely, but I do ask that you remain only on the first floor. The upper rooms have not been cared for in ages, and I'm afraid only darkness dwells there now. It's a pleasure to meet you. You may call me Abbot Kinney. I built this town. When you travel through Venice Beach, you are taking a gondola ride through my mind. Uh, you got any reefer, man? Yeah, any reefer? Hey, do they still sell indicas on the boardwalk? I was Miss Muscle Beach, 1962. I used to read people's fortunes on the boardwalk. I read my cards and they said I'd win if I entered the competition. So I did. I had grown weary of the East and thought that I might make it in flickers. <laughs> I bought this house when it was first built. You should have seen it then. Venice was exciting at that time. Oh, the piers were like fantasy land. Oh, and people would come from miles around just to take part in the auto races. <laughs> this was one of the very first houses built. And at that time, Market Street was a canal. Can you believe that? <laughs> I remember every morning I would rise and watch as the gondolas would sail past beneath my bedroom window. Oh, I kept my own small boat, of course. <laughs> She was a lovely cream-colored gondola. And every Sunday morning, I would put on my biggest straw hat. Oh, it was the one with all of the white roses all the way around the brim. And I would let my gondola drift out into the Grand Canal. All of us in our little boats, all of us just bidding each other a fond hello. <laughs> I dreamt of gondolas, tranquil transportation into a fairy tale by the sea, European elegance recreated here, a beacon on the west coast. Tell me, how much of it remains? I remember. I wept when they filled in my canal in 20. They drained it and filled it with rubble, paving over the magic with asphalt. That, hmm, that was the end of an era in many ways. The beauty and tranquility, the magic, faded and now I heard motor cars outside of my house instead of Gentle lapping of the waves. Yeah, man, yeah. I, I used to be a surfer back in the day. That's where we started. I was one of the originals. Right here. Right here. Venice Beach surfing. Those were the great days. It was fantastic. And then I got roped into all the, the art and the music. And then. It was usually because I was dating some girl and she wanted to so I 
<laughs> you know. <laughs> Tourists used to come to my booth on the pier. I'd read their palm and look into their eyes and lie to them. <laughs> I always knew I'd end up here. Saw it in the cars. It's not right, people knowing their fate. So, why should I tell them the truth? A bunch of us were getting drunk. Telling them at the, um, getting drunk at the fucking whaler. And I was with this girl, this beautiful girl from Westwood. She knew a fortune teller on the pier. So we all go to the pier, to the fortune teller reads her palm and this is what she saw we're married we got two kids we got a dog boom hey a week later she leaves she dumps me not what nothing just so much for fucking fortune telling then the depression hit and that changed everything I lost all my savings, and even worse than that, I lost work. I was suddenly too old to be an actress. <laughs> they stopped ringing after I turned 35. I spent ages gazing into the mirror, looking for what had gone wrong. Where was that fatal flaw? And then, one morning I awoke and discovered that I had crossed over onto the other side of the mirror. Now I spend my days gazing back through the glass, just watching as my house rocks. We all keep to ourselves now. We stay in our corners. This house is ours, a haven. We chose to stay, but we cannot leave. I don't know how the fuck I got here. <laughs> Just, I don't know. I mean, so don't ask me that shit. But I do know. Last thing I remember, I was doing beat night at beyond baroque but after that fuck all i don't know i don't know don't, don't ask me that shit man i jumped off the pier one full moon night it's beautiful i'd rather be swept away by the waves than stick around and let the disease spread destroying me I saw it in the cards. I saw this place too. Back when I was living. Found this little house. And I heard Delia crying in her mirror. I'd see him too, drifting around town. Followed him back here a couple of nights, and I knew I could return and be safe here. Besides, cards told me. I truly wish that you would not venture up there. Well, there's nothing bad upstairs, is there? Uh, no. There is another. I would uninvite him from my house, but. I'm afraid I hold no power over him. I just try to pretend he does not exist. I wish you would not go up there. He, he really is better off just left alone. I was murdered in the speedway by street thugs. They tossed my body into the lagoon, weighted down with blocks. I was never found. And then they cemented over the old canals and lagoon. 
Where once were waterways, now lie dusty roads, and I travel by riding on the bumpers of passing motor cars. I don't know who he is, or where he comes from. When I awoke on the other side of the glass, I saw him first, in my house, staring back at me from behind his mask. He ignores the rest of us, but I find his indifference frightening. I am the Speedway Ghost. It is my burden to stand guard over the Speedway, ignored by all traffic. I remember the early days, the dream of gondolas and archways. I've watched it collapse into despair. I am a silent specter, gazing out from my archway of the past, at the wandering homeless, the lonely bikers, the loud tourists, and the surfers who take cover of night to surf the magic bioluminescent waves which crest and curl amongst the lost ruins of Pacific Ocean Park. This is the ghost town ghetto by the sea, where all flock to and surrender to a dream. All this I know and remember, yet I cannot recall my own self. I know the truth they wish not to hear, and I've given up trying to convince them. They are now merely ghosts to me. It is a curse to see the truth, that all things fade in time and are forgotten. My mural shrine will soon be faded by the sun. It is inevitable. And those who linger here, holding on, they cling to shadows, fragments of broken dreams like dust motes upon the floor. All shadows vanish in the morning sun. It is all temporal. Magic falls like dust with the sun's rise. It is only resurrected at sunset. Morning comes now. I won this land in a coin toss and on it built a world of my dreams. People came from miles to experience my amusement pier, to dive the salt water plunge. It was a place of music. My dream came true. If not much remains, then so be it. I brought my dream to life, and that's all that matters. I don't have my cards anymore, but something in your eyes tells me you'll be back. When you return, would you bring me a seashell, please? I miss the sound of the waves. You will remember that we're still here. After all this time, we still dwell within my home. It continues to stand. Time swirls like a thundercloud outside, and yet here, Inside my home, I remain safe and beautiful. I know it was beat night. I know that, but whatever happened after that, I have no memory. Beat night. Did you wanna? Do you want to hear what I recited? <laughs> yeah. It's not, it was Shakespeare, but um, nobody seemed to mind. <clears throat> oh, God, I wish I had a joint. Our revels now are ended. These are actors, as I foretold you. They're all merely spirits that dissolve into air, into thin air. And like the baseless fabric of this vision, the cloud-capped tower, the gorgeous palaces, 
the whole globe itself all shall dissolve. We are such stuff as dreams are made of. Keep rocking, my boy. You keep rocking. <laughs>